Samantha Ray's fingers trembled as she unlocked the weathered door of Raven's Hollow, the sprawling Victorian mansion she'd inherited from her estranged grandmother. The rusted key, heavy and cold in her palm, was the only legacy Eliza Blackthorne had deigned to leave her. That and a cryptic letter hinting at dark secrets within the crumbling walls. Secrets Samantha would have preferred remain buried, along with the memories of her mother's untimely death fifteen years prior. Memories that still haunted her dreams, riddled with unanswered questions and a hollow ache where a parent's love should be. She stepped over the threshold, the ancient floorboards groaning underfoot. Motes of dust swirled in the pale light slanting through grime-streaked windows, illuminating sheet-draped furniture and peeling wallpaper. The air hung thick and still, echoing with ghosts of the past. Why had Eliza, a grandmother she'd met only once as a child, left her this decaying relic? The woman had been a stranger, as closed off and mysterious as the mansion itself. And yet, in her final days, she'd named Samantha sole heir to the Blackthorn legacy. A shiver traced down Samantha's spine as she moved deeper into the gloom, the click of her heels too loud in the oppressive silence. Despite the summer warmth outside, a bone-deep chill permeated the halls, seeping into her marrow. She wandered into what had once been a grand parlor, its glory now faded like a daguerreotype. Dust-shrouded portraits hung on the silk-paneled walls, their subjects stern and watchful. One in particular drew Samantha's eye, a severe woman in black lace, her silver-streaked hair pulled into a severe chignon. Piercing gray eyes seemed to bore into Samantha's very soul. Eliza. Even in oils, she emanated an aura of darkness, of secrets that cut like shards of mirror glass. Unnerved, Samantha backed away and collided with a solid wall of muscle. She yelped, whirling to find herself face to face with the most strikingly handsome man she'd ever seen. Raven hair fell over his forehead, framing angular cheekbones and eyes the color of a winter storm. He wore faded jeans and a black henley that clung to his sweat-dampened skin. Easy there, he said, deep voice tinged with amusement. I didn't mean to startle you. Samantha pressed a hand to her thundering heart. Who are you? What are you doing here? Nathaniel Asher. I'm the groundskeeper. His gaze flicked over her, assessing. Eh? If I had to venture a guess, you must be Eliza's granddaughter. The one who inherited this place. She nodded jerkily. Samantha Dot. Samantha Ray. My condolences for your loss. There was a flicker of some deeper emotion in his eyes before he shuddered it. Eliza was a complicated woman. That's putting it mildly, Samantha muttered. She hesitated, then plunged ahead, desperate for any scrap of insight. Did she? Did she ever talk about me? About why she left me the house? Nathaniel's jaw tightened imperceptibly. Eliza kept her own counsel. I'm just the hired help. He glanced away gaze catching on the portrait. Something haunted surfaced in his expression before it vanished. But I will say this, Raven's Hollow has a way of calling to its blood. For better or worse. A frisson of unease skittered through her. Before she could question him further, a bone-chilling wail pierced the air, raising every hair on Samantha's neck. It seemed to echo from everywhere and nowhere, a cry of unfathomable grief and fury. What the hell was that? She whispered. The welcoming committee. Nathaniel's smile was grim. Seems the ghosts of Raven's Hollow already know there's a blackthorn under its roof once more. Samantha's blood ran cold. Ghosts. She shouldn't be surprised, not with the oppressive atmosphere and necromantic energy saturating every inch of the mansion. Her family had a long history with the occult and arcane that traced back generations. It was that very history that had fractured her family, driving her mother away and into an early grave. And now, it seemed Samantha was being dragged into that same dark legacy. She met Nathaniel's stormy gaze, seeing her own fears reflected back at her. What have I gotten myself into? His expression softened, and Samantha felt the irrational urge to fold herself into his arms, to seek solace in his strength. The intensity of the desire shocked her. Nothing you can't handle if you're Eliza's kin, he said quietly. 
But you don't have to face it alone, Samantha. He held out a hand. Work roughened palm open in invitation. Slowly, heart pounding, Samantha let her own hand slip into his. His skin was warm, sending a thrill of electricity arcing through her, illuminating all the shadowed places inside her. Looking up into his eyes, she saw the same spark kindling, a magnetic pull drawing them together inexorably despite the ghosts of the past that lingered. As Samantha and Nathaniel delved deeper into the shadowed halls of Raven's Hollow, the air grew heavier, thick, with the weight of unspoken secrets and ancient grief. Cobwebs brushed Samantha's cheeks like spectral fingers, sending shudders rippling through her. But it was Nathaniel's presence at her side, his hand warm and steady in hers, that kept the rising tide of fear at bay. There was something about him, a quiet strength and understanding, that made her feel less alone in this gothic nightmare. They emerged into a cavernous library, its walls lined with towering bookcases that stretched to the vaulted ceiling. Stained glass windows cast eerie pools of color across the parquet floor, distorted images of ravens and thorny roses. In the center of the room stood a massive oak desk, its surface strewn with yellowed papers and leather-bound tomes. Eliza spent most of her time here, Nathaniel murmured, releasing Samantha's hand to run his fingertips along the desk's edge. Poring over old documents, chasing down leads to the family's dark past. Samantha's gaze snagged on a sepia photograph propped against an inkwell. A young woman in Edwardian dress, her hair piled high in an elegant Gibson girl coif, died. But it was her eyes that made Samantha's breath catch. Wide and haunted, holding a world of secrets and sorrow. My mother, she whispered, picking up the photo with trembling fingers. She looks so broken. Nathaniel came to stand behind her, his presence a solid warmth at her back. From what Eliza told me, your mother never recovered from the loss of your father, or from the expectations placed on her as a Blackthorn daughter. Samantha closed her eyes against the sting of tears. She ran away when I was twelve, left me with my grandmother, and disappeared into the night. I never saw her again. Until the police had knocked on Samantha's door, their faces grave as they delivered the news that shattered her world. Amelia Ray, found dead in a cheap motel room, an empty bottle of sleeping pills on the nightstand. No note, no explanation. Just avoid where mother should be. A tear slipped down Samantha's cheek, and Nathaniel's hand came to rest on her shoulder, a gentle anchor. I'm so sorry, Samantha. No child should have to bear that kind of loss. She leaned back into him instinctively, soaking in his strength. I never understood why she left. Why she couldn't fight for me, for us. And now? Now I'm trapped in the same cycle of secrets that destroyed her. Nathaniel turned her gently to face him his stormy eyes holding hers with fierce intensity. You are not your mother, Samantha, or your grandmother. You have a chance to break this pattern, to find the truth and set yourself free. His hand cupped her cheek, calloused thumb brushing away her tears. And I swear to you, on everything I am, you won't face it alone. He was so close, the scent of pine and wood smoke overwhelming her senses. Her gaze dropped to his lips, tracing their sculpted lines. Remembering how it felt to take solace in his embrace? What would it be like to lose herself in him? To let him chase away the shadows of her past with the fire of his touch? As if sensing the direction of her thoughts, Nathaniel's eyes darkened, his breath hitching. Slowly, achingly slowly, he lowered his head towards hers. A violent gust of icy wind howled through the library, slamming shut the French doors with a deafening bang. Books flew from the shelves, swirling around them in a vortex of fluttering pages and ancient knowledge. The stained glass windows rattled in their panes, as if shaken by an unseen hand. And there, materializing in the center of the maelstrom, was the spectral figure of a woman in a tattered white gown. Raven hair billowed around a face Samantha knew all too well from faded photographs and the lines of her own reflection. Mother, she choked out, clutching Nathaniel's arm in icy shock. 
Amelia Ray's ghost turned hollow, accusing eyes on her daughter, one arm lifting to point a skeletal finger directly at Samantha's heart. Murderer, the specter hissed, voice dripping with venom and despair. You killed me and now you will reap the poison you've sown. Samantha shook her head frantically, tears streaming down her face. No, Mom, please. I didn't, um, uh, I never meant. But the ghost only glared with hatred burning in its sunken sockets. Darkness begets darkness, daughter mine. The curse will have its due. With a final piercing wail, Amelia's spirit dissipated like mist on the wind, leaving only the echo of her curse ringing in Samantha's ears. The pages fluttered to the ground, a snowfall of secrets and lost history. Samantha collapsed against Nathaniel's chest, sobs racking her slender frame. He held her tightly, murmuring reassurances into her hair even as his own heart raced with dread. She blames me, Samantha gasped brokenly. My own mother thinks I killed her. Shh, love, no. That wasn't her. Not really. He stroked her back in soothing circles. This house. It twists things. Takes our worst fears and sharpest regrets and throws them back in our faces. Samantha clung to him, desperate for the steady beat of his heart beneath her cheek. What are we going to do, Nate? How do we fight this? The only way we can. Together. He pressed a kiss to her temple, lips lingering on her skin. A vow and a prayer. We find out the truth about your family, break this cycle of tragedy. And I'll be with you every step of the way, darling. No matter how deep the darkness goes. She raised her head to meet his gaze, seeing the steadfast promise shining in those stormy depths. And in that moment, Samantha knew she would walk through hell itself with this man. Would face any demon, any skeleton in her family's closet, as long as his hand was in hers. Slowly, surely, she stretched up to brush her lips over his, sealing the unspoken pact between them with a kiss that tasted of salt and desperation and fragile, unfurling hope. Nathaniel's arms tightened around her, crushing her to him as he deepened the kiss. Tongues tangled, breath mingled. A stolen moment of solace amidst the encroaching shadows. When they finally broke apart, chests heaving, Samantha laid her palm over his thundering heart. Don't let me go, she whispered. Stay with me, Nate. No matter what ghosts come knocking. Always, he rasped. In this world and the next. I will never leave your side. And there, surrounded by the fallen secrets and shattered past, they sealed their fate. Came together in desperation and desire, love and absolution. An unbreakable bond forged in the crucible of Raven's Hollow. But beyond the walls... The wind still keened a dirge of sorrow and revenge, whispering of dark revelations yet to come. In the days that followed, Samantha and Nathaniel poured over the secrets scattered like fallen leaves throughout Raven's Hollow. They combed through brittle journals and faded correspondence, piecing together the dark tapestry of the Blackthorn legacy. Late one night, huddled together in the library under the guttering light of oil lamps, Samantha found a letter that made her blood run cold. The paper was soft with age, the elegant script spidery and faded. But the words... The words leapt off the page like a cobra, sinking venomous fangs into her heart. My dearest Amelia, it began, I know the truth of what grows within you. The abomination spawned of our sinful union. It cannot be allowed to draw breath to taint the Blackthorn name with its cursed existence. A wretched sob tore from Samantha's throat. She pressed a hand to her mouth, the letter fluttering from nerveless fingers. Nathaniel was at her side in an instant, strong arms enfolding her. Samantha, love, what is it? She turned her face into his chest, hot tears soaking his shirt. It's from my father. My real father. The words tasted like ashes on her tongue. He and my mother, they were brother and sister. I'm the product of their incestuous union. Nathaniel's breath left him in a harsh rush. Oh, Samantha. He wanted her to kill me, Nate. To cleanse the family tree of the cursed fruit of their sin. A wrenching keen worked its way up from her very marrow. 
My own father wanted me dead. Nathaniel held her tighter. His heart beat a staccato drum beneath her ear. But she didn't do it. Amelia chose you, Samantha. Chose to give you life, even knowing the consequences. Consequences. The word hit Samantha like a freight train. Dread her blood to ice water in her veins. Slowly, she lifted her head from Nathaniel's chest, realization dawning with sickening clarity. The curse, she whispered, turning one sibling against another, unleashing madness, acts of unspeakable evil. What if it wasn't my father's letter that killed my mother? What if it was me? Horror carved deep lines into Nathaniel's handsome face. You can't blame yourself for your parents' choices, Samantha. The sickness, the depravity, that's not you. But the dark tide was rising in Samantha, poisonous truths boiling to the surface. Isn't it? Their blood flows through me, Nate. The same twisted desires, the same vicious instincts. How can I outrun a curse that's carved into my very DNA? She tore herself from his embrace, staggering backwards, swiping angrily at the tears that wouldn't stop falling. You should stay away from me. Before I infect you, too. Before the madness takes hold and destroys us both. Nathaniel advanced on her, eyes flashing in the amber lamplight. No, uh, no. I won't let you shoulder this alone, Samantha. I won't let you succumb to this cycle of self-loathing and despair. He caught her wrists in an unbreakable grip, yanking her into the hard planes of his body. I see you. The real you beneath the guilt and the fear. And that woman is the strongest, most compassionate soul I've ever known. She struggled weakly against him, even as her treacherous heart ached to believe his words. You don't know what I'm capable of, Nate. The darkness I have inside me. His gaze burned into hers, branding her very soul. Then, show me. Let me into that darkness so we can face it together. And then his mouth was on hers, hot and urgent and claiming. Devouring her cries, her doubts, her demons. Tongues warred and teeth clashed, the kiss a battle for dominance, for absolution. They sank to the Persian carpet, in a tangle of limbs and desperate touches. Clothing was rent aside, skin met skin. And there, amid the ghosts of the past and the specter of an uncertain future, they came together in a firestorm of flesh and need. Nathaniel worshipped her body with hands and lips and tongue, pouring light into all her broken places, bringing her to shuddering, sobbing climax again and again until the void inside her spilled over with something bright and pure and holy. When he finally entered her, velvet steel sinking to the hilt, it felt like coming home, like two shattered halves fusing into a single, perfect whole. They moved as one, hearts pounding in synchronicity as they chased the rapture just out of reach. And when it crashed over them, white-hot bliss scouring them inside out, Samantha swore the very universe aligned. Aftermath found them twined around each other, slick skin cooling in the library's hush. Samantha lay boneless in the shelter of Nathaniel's arms, head pillowed on his chest as his fingers drew lazy patterns on her spine. What now? Her whisper was a puff of air against his sweat-sheened skin. How do we move forward, knowing what we know? His arms tightened around her, a silent vow. We cleave to each other. We stand united against whatever fresh hell this house throws at us. And we remember that our future is our own to write. He tipped her chin up, eyes blazing with conviction in the dying lamplight. You are not your ancestors, Samantha Ray. Your story doesn't have to end like theirs. Samantha searched his face, seeing only unwavering faith reflected back at her. Faith in her. In them. In the love that had taken root amidst thorns and shadows, defiant and true. Slowly, surely, she nodded. Let his certainty, his strength, flow into her like molten gold. A talisman against the dark. In the days that followed their shattering revelation, Samantha and Nathaniel threw themselves into preparing for the final confrontation with the curse that had plagued the Blackthorn family for generations. They scoured the library for any scrap of knowledge, any whisper of a weakness in the malevolent entity's armor. Late one stormy night, 
As lightning split the sky and thunder rattled the mansion's ancient bones, Samantha found it. A faded inscription in a crumbling tome, written in a spidery hand. The curse's power lies in the blood it has spilled. Only when the wronged are avenged and the guilty punished can the cycle be broken. Samantha's heart raced as understanding clicked into place. The curse fed on the suffering and madness it inflicted, growing stronger with each generation it tainted. To defeat it, they would have to confront the sins of the past head-on, would have to drag the darkest secrets of Raven's Hollow into the purifying light. She turned to Nathaniel, eyes alight with grim determination. I know what we have to do. Under a moon-stained bloody red, they stood before the Blackthorn family crypt, the marble edifice looming like the maw of some great beast. Samantha's hands shook as she fit the ancient key into the rusted lock, the screech of protesting metal shattering the sepulchral silence. The door swung open with a groan, expelling stale air that reeked of decay and dark secrets long buried. Nathaniel's hand found hers, steadying her as they crossed the threshold into the velvet darkness beyond. Their footsteps echoed hollowly off the stone walls as they moved deeper into the crypt, past alcoves filled with moldering bones and names worn smooth by time. At the far end, on a raised dais, stood a sarcophagus of obsidian granite, the Blackthorn crest emblazoned across its surface in tarnished silver. Amelia and Roderick Blackthorn, Samantha's mother and father, eternally entwined in death as they had been in life, and the source of the curse that had ripped their family asunder. With trembling fingers, Samantha reached out to trace the letters of her mother's name. I'm sorry, she whispered, tears spilling down her cheeks. I'm sorry you were trapped in this cycle of pain and manipulation. That you felt so alone, so hopeless, you thought death was the only escape. She drew a shuddering breath, squaring her shoulders as she turned to face the sarcophagus. But ends now. The curse dies with you, with the truth of what happened all those years ago, finally brought to light. As if in answer, a bone-chilling wind ripped through the crypt, extinguishing their torches and plunging them into inky blackness. A writhing mist seeped from the gaps in the stone, coalescing into a spectral figure that hovered above the sarcophagus. Roderick Blackthorn's ghost glared down at them with malice burning in its hollow eye sockets. Foolish girl, it hissed, voice dripping with venom. You think you can break what has endured for lifetimes? The curse is eternal, as long as Blackthorn blood flows in your veins. Nathaniel stepped forward, shielding Samantha with his body. Your reign of terror is over, Roderick. The truth will out, and with it, your power crumbles. The specter threw back its head and laughed, a sound like nails screaming down a chalkboard. And what truth is that, boy? That my dear, deluded sister thought she could thwart me by running away. That she believed love could conquer the darkness I planted in her womb? Samantha flinched as if struck, bile rising in her throat. You're a monster. You violated your own sister, condemned an innocent child to a lifetime of misery and self-loathing. Roderick's ghastly face stretched into a sneer. I purified our bloodline of weakness, ensured the Blackthorn legacy would endure, unsullied by lesser men. Your legacy is nothing but rot and ruin, Nathaniel snarled. A festering wound that's poisoned every life it's touched. But no more. He turned to Amelia's side of the sarcophagus, voice gentling as he addressed the bones within. Amelia, you were stronger than you ever knew. You defied your brother, defied the sickness he tried to infect you with. You chose Samantha, chose love and hope over oblivion. A warm breeze stirred the fetid air, carrying the scent of lily and honey. And then, shimmering into being beside Roderick's twisted form, the luminous specter of Amelia Blackthorn. Tears glittered on her translucent cheeks as she beheld Samantha, lips curving in a tremulous smile. My baby. My beautiful, brave daughter. I'm so sorry I wasn't strong enough to protect you. Samantha reached for her mother's ghost, fingers passing through the pearlescent mist. You did protect me, Mama. You gave me life. Gave me a chance to be more than the curse, more than father's evil. 
At the word, father, Amelia flinched, chains materializing around her wrists and throat. Roderick laughed cruelly, yanking her to his side with a wave of his hand. You see? She's mine for eternity, bound by the guilt and shame of what we did. Samantha shook her head fiercely, eyes blazing. No. She's free of you, you hear me? Your hold over her, over all of us, is broken. She turned to her mother, pouring every ounce of love and absolution into her voice. Let go, Mama. Let go of the pain, the self-hatred. Forgive yourself. Because I forgive you. I love you. Amelia's specter shuddered, the chains dissolving into motes of light. With a desperate, jubilant cry, she broke free of Roderick's grip, flying to enfold Samantha in an ethereal embrace. Roderick howled with rage, the force of it shaking the tomb's foundations. No! She's mine! The Blackthorns are mine! But his form was already unraveling, shredded by the pure, radiant love emanating from Samantha and Amelia. The shadows that had cloaked him burst into flame, consuming him from the inside out until only a wisp of foul smoke remained. You have no power here, Samantha declared, voice ringing with conviction. Not now, not ever again. With a final piercing wail, Roderick's ghost dissipated, sucked into the void from whence it came. The curse, ancient and malevolent, shattered like glass, sharp-edged shards skittering into oblivion. Amelia cupped Samantha's face in spectral hands, pride and sorrow, mingling in her opalescent eyes. My darling girl, you freed us all. Nathaniel came to stand beside them, one arm wrapping around Samantha's waist. She freed herself by embracing the truth and the love that's always lived inside her. Amelia nodded, a serene smile gracing her lips. Take care of each other. Be the light in the darkness for one another. That's all a mother could ever want for her child. With a final, shimmering caress, she faded away, born to a well-deserved rest on a sigh of wind. Samantha turned into Nathaniel's arms, face buried in the crook of his neck as sobs racked her slender frame. He held her through the storm, murmuring words of comfort and devotion against her hair. When at last the tempest subsided, they emerged from the crypt hand in hand to greet a sky painted in the pinks and golds of dawn. The air tasted sweeter somehow, the dew kissed grass greener and more alive. Raven's Hollow stood silent and watchful, its dark facade lightened by the touch of morning sun. No longer a bastion of secrets and sorrow, but a monument to survival. To the unshakable bond between lovers, between mothers and daughters. Samantha twined her fingers with Nathaniel's, head held high as they strode towards the house that was now theirs, towards a future unwritten, unburdened by the shackles of the past. She had walked through the valley of the shadow, had stared into the abyss of her family's darkest sins, and she had emerged victorious, tempered by tragedy, buoyed by a love that could move mountains and part oceans. In the end, that was the greatest legacy the Blackthorns could have left her. The knowledge that she was stronger than any curse, mightier than any monster lurking in the dark. That she was, and always would be, the mistress of her own fate. The author of her own story. With Nathaniel at her side and the ghosts of Raven's Hollow laid to rest, that story was only just beginning.